Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the AOC Pro Cup Season 1. This is the first best of three of this amazing tournament, and we're happy to be able to bring it to you guys here on Dota Talk TV 2. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and hopefully you guys will enjoy. Starting off, we have a great match between a Singaporean team, Scythe, and the Vietnamese team, Spirit Gaming. So it should be a very fun best of three match to kick us off for this um, several week long event. I'm looking forward to it and hopefully you guys are as well. But thank you guys once again for tuning in. I am Blaze the Dota Talk, joined by Congo Kyle. What's going on, man? Hey, sorry, you're breaking up quite a bit. So I'm struggling to to hear you. Maybe I should just call you back quick on Skype. It's just not, sure. I can't really hear you as you talk. No problem, go for it. I'll just call, call you back quick once. All right, so small technical thing, just to get that fixed early, so I don't have to deal with it the rest of the day. How's it going, man? Uh, yeah, okay, that sounds a bit better. I'm just double checking if no one's downloading in the house here. But yeah, great to be here. Excited to see the new South. Uh, well, I knew it is, but the South lineup with Miracle and, and the guys, and going up against Spirit. Um, I took a quick look at the that the, the Dota 2 launch bets, and looks like it's 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 slightly in favor of South. So. Um, but yeah, this this I guess Ember Spirit being picked up. I mean that was a change made uh, I think last weekend. No, when he was added, it was this week or last weekend that he was added into captain's mode. So Ten I'm really excited to see remaining. where they put the Ember Spirit. I have for the last few games that I have seen it has been put Five into the solo mid position. Um, so you know for uh, for Paulson I think take it into that solo mid. We have to see how they do mm -hmm. run it, but it's going to be pretty interesting to see how Ember Spirit fits into this. Yeah, I think yeah, these are some really strong players, to be honest. All these guys kind of joining up together to form this team. I mean, they've not even been really training together for more than one month in total, but the that amount of time is still plenty for going into a tournament and just trying to start things off on the right foot. They already yeah. seem to be looking into experimental new strategies. It's kind of good that right now that Scythe is in its own little malleable phase as far as how it's trying to draft and how it's trying to build its team lineup. So they can go for new ballsy pickups like this new Ember Spirit that came into Captain's Mode only a few days ago. And they can also pick up the classic Venomancer to make sure that they're going to be pretty well reinforced on the lane. In general, I think that they're just kind of drafting this aggressive strategy, a huge amount of magical and physical burst damage, and we'll see how Spirit Gaming answers. But uh, yeah, I mean, we have some all-stars coming out of Scythe, but we also have some uh, really good players coming out of Spirit Gaming. Now, it was under the tag of Love before, and that's uh, he's uh, kind of an all-star of Vietnam, but this is actually Secret, captaining it up for Spirit Gaming, so... Yeah, it should be a pretty interesting seconds, setup between these two teams. Not only the fact that, of course, they've seen each other once before, and Scythe did take that series quite handily, but now Spirit Gaming trying to do the best they can to uh, put the shoe on the other foot, to turn it around a little bit, and to go forward a bit. And, of course, since it is a best-of-three series, we get to see the draft and the play styles progress a little bit. We'll see different... Uh, plans of attack from each side and we'll see exactly what each team learns from this series uh, I'm just looking at the first pick uh, for for spirits I mean there were a couple of great heroes still left in the pool they took out the Sadak they took out the you know the the first bands going out but there was still I mean there was the um, there was the bristleback left in the pool there was the clockwork as well strong sort of you know, if you're looking at heroes picked up in the first phase um crystal maiden uh, alchemist not really that popular anymore since he's nerfed to his night vision uh, but still you know I'd, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit Stranged or weirded out by the Lone Druid first pickup. Maybe it's a hero that one of their players plays perfectly. Maybe it's he's the Admiral Bulldog of the of Southeast Asia or Vietnam. But going for a Lone Druid first pick, I mean, it's not a hero that's that that popular unless it's a, a yeah. And Marana is also in the pool and uh, yeah, they pick it up there. But yeah, I'm just worried about this Lone Druid pickup. Um, if um, if if it, if they're picking it up because it's one of their players' best heroes, then and if South knew that, then maybe they would have seen them banning it out in the next phase. So maybe it's just one of that case. Well just is that case but uh, they do pick up the Marana which we are speaking about popular pickups there it is coming out there and Darkseer pick up from South I mean that is a hero I haven't seen in ages yeah uh, coming back into the fold a little bit a lot of the western teams are just now picking him back up again like uh, I think there I was watching a series with Navi previously and Funnick hadn't played Darkseer since MLG actually and uh, had just picked it up in the past week so Western teams are starting to see remaining. his potential again and see him in synergetic combination with other heroes and we'll probably see some great wombo combo 
uh, type oh, with Ember. selections in those selections after the fact. But yeah, of course, Ember uh, does like to get that, that big burst of nukes. Maybe with the th three fire remnants stacked up on top of one another, a huge magical burst right there. Of course, he also has some good damage over time with his Searing Chains, his Flame Guard, and uh, a couple of quick slashes with that Sleight of Fist. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's really good to start it off, and they just really... The only thing they're really lacking right now is follow-through stuns. They do need some stuns to make sure that they can lock their Radiant opponents in position and kick. do considerable damage over time with that Venomancer. Kind of starts to fight mm -hmm. out a little bit longer, but in the meantime, Spirit Gaming, they seem to be going for a completely different strategy. They're going, as far as I can tell right now, a Shadow Demon Marana Leshrac aggressive try lane. Go for disruption to arrow. Split Earth follows the disruption if the arrow doesn't connect. And then, uh, of course, they have a lot of kill potential as well as push potential with the Leshrac's Diabolic Edict. But we're going to see Scythe pick up this puck. Probably going to go to Polison. As we said, he's he's the main man for the solo mid, at least was the case for first departure. And we have seen him playing quite a bit of mid on the team Scythe as they've been kind of trying to work out the kinks for their roster here. So, most likely Pulsan running the Puck in the mid lane, and is going to be able to really do well in that lane. I mean, Puck in general is a hero that controls the lane extremely well, but once he picks mm -hmm. up that Blink Dagger, and even beforehand, he's able to gank, he's able to move, he's able to really just bring the hurt to Spirit, and that's going to be their general intention across the board. One... One more hero uh, to be selected to support, hopefully with a stun, and from there, they're, they're looking pretty good for an all-around roster, but what do you think about Spirit? Well, you know, with the puck pickup, we haven't, <coughs> sorry, we haven't really seen, well, uh, I personally don't like remaining. puck in the off lane. I feel, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a hero that can, as you mentioned, can absolutely dominate a lane, and mid lane is her thing. That's Dyer where you put the puck. Uh, but, you know, Ember Spirit at the same time, if they are going to go for aggressive, I think Ember Spirit is going to have a, an horrific time uh, in that Radiant bottom or in his in his safe lane farming up against three range heroes, especially with the combo they can set up. And he, he has an escape, but only at level six. Well, he has got his, his slight of fist, but, you know, that's, that might just help him. As he comes out of the disruption, he's able to put the slight of fist on. Whoa. He may be able to dodge the arrow. Oh, wow. Spirit Breaker. The Spirit Police. Uh, um. Okay, we'll talk about that in a moment. But yeah, Ember Spirit in, in a safe lane is not really something that I want to see. I want to see him put in the solo mid. That's where probably where he excels the most. And as you mentioned, yeah, Puck probably could go into the... But no, I don't know. Could that SP support or SP... I think it's uh, Spirit Breaker support. Yeah, we're seeing Space yeah, yeah, Cow yeah. run the number four position. This is unorthodox to say the least, but it could be effective. We've seen it used uh, very, very effectively in some capacities. I think most importantly is the fact that he's going to be able to not only provide some good stun, but the haste aura, making sure the Ember Spirit's very mobile, the uh, recently reduced movement speed of Venomancer isn't going to be hindering him from getting in a good position, and mm -hmm. uh, they're just going to be, in general, uh, able to move about the map more aggressively and be able to kind of take the fight to their opponents. At least that's the idea. I'm obviously not sure how well that will be followed through, and that remains to be seen for all of us. But uh, after we, this quick pause, we're going to get into an awesome match between two very impressive teams. And what it looks to be quite a bloodbath considering the kill potential of most of these heroes. Mm hmm. Uh, Doom Sprint does up as well against Ember Spirit. Uh, the most annoying thing is when you eventually do catch him in a lane by himself and you manage to lock him down for a couple of seconds, it takes literally quick fingers two, three seconds and he'll jump away to a spirit. So having the Doom out there is fantastic, getting really up and close and personal. If he goes for a Blink Dagger, he goes for a Shadow Blade while farming. Um, I'm assuming he's going to play their farmer in the... In the possibly going to go mid? Were they going to put, try to put him mid up against the... Uh, maybe assuming that so. the... Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that they're thinking along the same lines as me. That is that the Ember Spirit, that the Ember Spirit will go mid. Uh, well, looks like he is actually still going to do that. Yeah, he's going mid. So they're going to probably put the Doom up against him or Doom with a trial lane. Or oh god, I don't know what's going on here. But we should probably use this opportunity quickly to introduce our players. All right. So starting off, looking over at the lineup of Scythe Gaming. This is the Singaporean team, recently reformed. And now we do see Freedom is going to be going on that top lane. Boots first, being pulled one ward. This is going to be. Uh, something that Ice 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 has run in the past, an offlane spirit breaker, as far as I can tell. But uh, looking over mm -hmm. at the remainder of the heroes, we do see Hannah lurking uh, towards the top lane uh, around the ancient camp. Curious if he's going to start in the jungle or whereabouts he actually is going to wind up. But in the meantime, that is going to leave um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, also known as Scripted. He's going to be running on the support of Venomancer. He's going to be a pretty hard support Venomancer if this Spirit Breaker does intend to be a core individual. But as you mentioned, this leaves Miracle to be solo mid on the Ember Spirit and Polisun to be solo safe lane on the Puck. Very interesting. Yeah, and over on Spirit, we've got Secret. 
on Captain Secret on the Shadow Demon, Lone Rune being played by ABCXYZ, <laughs> Latrak being picked up by a, is it Aries? Aries, Aries. Okay. Yeah, and uh, number six, Hash Six on the Marana, and then finally the Doom into the middle lane, Mitha to take on the Ember Spirit. And you know, it, this is a lane that uh, Doom I think will struggle in in the early stages since he has such low base armor. Um, I feel like he can be harassed quite a bit, but Miracle not having a lot of damage at the moment, um, mm -hmm. or more lag coming out here. Miracle not having a lot of damage at the moment, so won't be able to harass the Doom, and he'll get a level or two in the Scorched Earth, scorched earth and then should be able to sort of stand his ground up against uh, Miracle. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a farm fest, unless, as you mentioned, the supports so with the Spirit Breaker going boots first. If he's actually going to start roaming immediately, try to get a charge onto mid, followed up with a Venomous Scale. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're pretty much going to be roaming around the, the spirit police and, uh, and Lieutenant Did you Venomancer. So already going to be putting some hurt on him using the flame guard to just get that immolation up. A nice little bit of damage over time. And of course, Doom doesn't have any magic damage to burst that down. So he's yeah. going to have to kind of wait and deal with it. And as you said, uh, now it looks like Scythe is in position to go for the first blood here. Doom going back for the Tango. Now back out to the mid and this is their time to pounce. They're going to come in. If they land the Gale, this is a guaranteed kill. And I'm um, kind of I'm not sure why they're so hesitant. It looks like, there we go, the charge is going to come through. Of Doom in a very bad spot. Mises is going to try to come back to his allies, turn this into a 3v3, but it might be too late already. Scorched Earth healing him up quite a bit, but locked in with the bolas. Will be disrupted by Secret. Nice play there. But is it enough? The courier in the fray even. But Misa will be the first blood. So now Split Earth will come out of Miracle, dropping very low. A couple more right clicks. The bottle, is it enough? Yes! Miracle is about to get out of this. Oh my gosh. Now we do see... A quick little pause, not really too tactical as really there's only so much the heroes on the map can do right now. Essentially everything's on cooldown or out of mana. There's really no potential for anybody to be planning things. It's just want to make sure that the technical issues are not going to affect this early fight. And now we do see that they might be able to bring down one more. The Split Earth will come out onto Venomancer. We do see Scripted dropping pretty low, but with that Boots mobility increase, Freedom is pursuing onto Secret to try to finish him off. Venomancer dies to the last track. Will Secret get the Denied to the Ancients? We'll see here. The self-disrupted, the arrow comes out. Freedom actually baited into a terrible spot, turning it into a two for one in favor of Spirit. Uh, though they do lose out the Shadow Demon in the end, was killed by a neutral. Scythe also got the first blood. Yeah, that, that was actually pretty cool. The, um, the last track got a nice stun off onto the Betterman as he tried to run away and secured himself a double kill. So, as a support, that's fantastic. Boots, maybe another set of wards coming up pretty soon. And um, the the arrow as well that came out from Burano, I mean, mm. he, walked quite a, he walked quite far away, I mean, to get that arrow land, lined up in place and uh, almost going down to the Ancients as well. But I think both of them tried to deny themselves in the Ancients. Well, actually, Spirit Breaker tried to pursue to the Ancients, but still. Nice little long team fight at the same time, and Miracle, as you mentioned, getting away on one little bottle charge was pretty insane. Yeah, that, that was pretty ridiculous right there, but in the end, I uh, still have to hand it to Spirit. They turned it around quite nicely, despite being in a very difficult position. Most of the time, most teams would just say, okay, that's the first blood against the Doom. It sucks, we'll try to work around it. Now, Spirit, they take the fight right back, and they really make some magic happen, so it was very impressive. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, the other solo lanes haven't been going so well for Spirit. We do see the Dark Seer Hannah has picked up 15 for 1 over the Lone Druid 14 for 3. When the Lone Druid hits level 5, he'll feel a little bit more confident to be aggressive on yeah. the lane uh, once he gets that Barrier Resummon as well to bring it back up to full HP. But until that point, he's just kind of resting on his laurels, having a minor CS advantage, but nothing significant against the offlaning Dark Seer. In the meantime, uh, Puck is doing pretty well down on the bottom lane against the Marana. Right now, 11 for 3 over the Priestess of the Moon's 10 for 0, as she doesn't have much base damage to her name. Mm. And the middle lane as well, I mean, I'm, still, I'm just keeping on middle lane on the Miracle, because, I mean, I haven't seen the Ever Spirit play that yet, but as you can see what Mises is doing, every time he pops on that Flame Guard, he puts on the, um, puts on the Scorched Earth to try and push him back a bit, and it's actually not doing too bad, I mean, in terms of CS, he's only sitting one behind, so it's not that terrible. Room control, obviously, is a bit of a problem, especially since Miracle's reaching that level 6 now, but uh, once the Doom gets or Doom up, I think Miracle's going to have a really tough time, especially with rotations in from the Marana as well as the, the Shadow Demon and the other combo, and I'm disconnecting. Oh, that's unfortunate, but I'll take oh, it from here. Um, essentially, what we're looking at for the the 
Heroes in the mid lane, the fiery guys here. It's kind of an immolation for an immolation trade-off. The Doom does heal up while the Flame Guard is there, so it is kind of nullifying the damage over time effect. But unfortunately, he's not actually doing any damage in turn to Miracles, so that's uh, kind of a, a lacking aspect. And now the Doom finds himself in a really bad spot, gets hit up by those Searing Chains, now hit by the charge, and soon enough, uh, will be enough damage for the Venomous Gale, but will he live long enough to cast it? No! They turn around with a great Split Earth. Here comes the Edict after the Disruption, and this is going to be another two kills for Spirit. Oh my goodness, this is just such a great turn of events. They're rotating so well, and they're responding to these ganks extremely effectively because they have the map vision. They see these, this coming just a little bit sooner than Scythe is preparing for it, and as such, they have been able to favorably exchange in both of these early skirmishes. You still have an issue, sir? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm struggling to hear you on Skype. I'm just going to call you back again. Sure. I don't know what's going Hopefully on. Hopefully that fixes it. Sorry, guys. Small technical stuff. He's over in South Africa, so the internet issues sometimes come into play. But we do see a kill up on the top lane. Just movement from Spirit Breaker. Uh, getting surged up. Getting the Iron Chill. And doing what he can there to bring down the Lone Druid, which is just a beautiful play that really sets him back in the lane. Meanwhile, down on bottom, Marana will be picked off. That's just not even requiring Pulse on's ultimate. He just is able to nuke him down and uh, kind of a misplay oh, from the line there oh sorry about that and mid lane wow kills coming out across the board where spirit gaming are triumphing in these skirmishes of multiple heroes the solo and dual pickoffs are coming across the board for them one for each lane impressive indeed um really just setting back their opposition but just ch double checking with you man is everything yeah. go going through smoothly it seems a bit better now. It's just I don't know. Like it, uh, every now and then, in, only in team fights. Like I, you, your voice just disappears completely, and I hear like bits of bobs out here. But there's a doom available now on on Misa if he wants to try go on miracle. But miracle, what he actually did there was actually pretty. It was it was perfect. He got his level six up immediately. Uh, he saw the opportunity, jumped straight away onto the doom with his um with his ultimates and uh, grabbed him up and killed him immediately. So that's the power of you know, the Ember Spirit. Why he excels so much in middle lane is his ability at level six pretty much to kill anything. So. Nice little pick off there as well. And also the pack in the bottom lane managed to pick off the Marana. And I agree, as you said, like spirits are doing fantastic in team fights. I don't know, they just their composition seems to be a lot better with the, you know casting spells. It was just all the, their spells work a lot better together until the Dark Side joins the fight, of course, as well as the Ember Spirit. But um, yeah, they're doing pretty well in team fights. But the solo pickoffs are what they really can't have. I mean, they can't lose lanes if they are going to win team fights in the early game. If they secure their lanes, they'll just do so much more. And as I say that, there's going to be a charge onto yeah. SB. This could be bad. He just resummoned the bear. It just came up cool, then immediately resummons it. Now vacuum back under the iron shell. Big damage from freedom, and he will fall. And we do see the ultimate popped off from the Marana, but not able to actually set up any real aggression with that. In fact, Miracle's just going to farm up a stack uh, of easy creeps as well as some lane creeps. Pick up some early CS, easy CS there, but the big deal is shutting down that lone druid so effectively. Now down on bottom, there is the pickoff on the Venomancer with that very slow movement speed, even with the brown booties. Yeah, Marana is able to leap across, get that arrow off, and bring him down solo. So they do get something for something, but it's still hurting them with that lone druid uh, falling apart on farm. He was saving up so much on reliable gold too. Mm. Well, you know, South aren't that far ahead. They're only about a thousand gold ahead at the moment, so they are sort of holding their own in the lanes for now. But I feel so bad for that lone druid losing his bear. It's 60 seconds, a minute left without a bear, and having a look at Miracle's uh, skill build with the um, uh, with the with the Ember Spirit, you know, a lot of people are obviously wondering how it's skilled to or what items spawn and stuff like that. But this is pretty much your perfect sort of mid. Um, you don't really have the damage to slide a person to. Oh, Doom now. Disruption as well, gonna cancel some of the damage. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is gonna actually work out. He dodges out the Split Earth. He might be able to survive through this. They do throw out the Gale. The, do the charge isn't there fast enough, though. And it looks like, indeed, he will be denied. So they're gonna have Freedom come in. Big Dan right click's gonna be able to bring down Secret. I'm going to retreat back up to the high ground despite the damage from the Diabolic Edict. So, makes it a one for one. Of course, it was a solo mid for a support, but honestly, I thought Spirit Gaming were going to claim that kill a lot easier. In the end, it was a denial from the Venomancer. They didn't get much out of it. They, of course, killed him and sent him backpacking, but they didn't get anything positive in their direction. And it's really hard oh. to build momentum with this kind of a lineup. They should really, really wait now. SP sit in base. 
and wait and as soon as that bear gets spawned Dyer's in you go or again charge yeah. onto the sp and no sorry charge onto the spirit um oh my god the silver bear and take him out immediately i mean that'll be just it'll really shut him down i mean he doesn't have much 1600 gold i'm assuming he's going for a um a relic nice nice early relic I uh, don't think it'll be Anabitis, I mean, we haven't seen that in ages. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, Ember Spirit, pretty much perfect for the solo mode since Slider Fist doesn't do much without damage. So going for the first Searing Chains as well as the Flame Guard, and it just really locks you down in that middle. Mm -hmm. you know, it will lock down anyone in the middle lane, but now looking for. Dyer's top looking for the, the Silver Bear, we don't find him. Yeah, but they can still put some damage on the tower here. It's already down to half. He's, Iron Shield is going to clear out the creep wave, no problem at all. And uh, Darkseer just about has that mechanism finished. He has the Dyer's buckler, has the headdress working on attack. that last recipe to finish it off. But Spirit Gaming want to try to shut him down prior to that. We're going to see the Moonlight Shadow come out. But will there be a successful split Earth out of the Invis? It doesn't look like so they're going to fall for this one. They know everything's off the map. They're going to go in retreat, and it looks like they're fine. The arrow, not going to connect. And... Yeah, Dyer's this is going to be just more insults than injury being thrown out by mm. Spirit Gaming. And that rotation gives a little bit of time for Gold to accrue, for Scythe to move towards their next big thing. And yeah, Ember Spirit, he is pretty strong now, but he's going to be extremely Dyer's strong over the next three levels. He's going to pick up a point of Slide of Fist, so he has longer range of initiation with those Searing Chains. He's going to oh. pick up that second point in his ultimate for more burst magical damage, and just a lot of great things. But will be hit by the arrow. The Doom will come out, and this should be the death of Miracle. We'll see if he pulls another Houdini this time around, but right now just looks in a really bad spot. No t way to... Cast a spell, no way to TP, just gonna try to deny the neutrals, but completely unsuccessful in that regard. Yeah, that was a bit greedy, I mean, sitting all the way forward there. He doesn't actually have any spirits on the map that he could jump to, um, in case he got a gang like that, and uh, very, very greedy sitting behind the tower, obviously trying to put a bit of pressure on it. And, uh, but on top down. lane, A, B, C, X, Y, Z gonna hit by a double Iron Shell, essentially, though no, one of the creeps will walk away, but still, uh, Lundra takes some hits, now we see the rotation. Leshrac and Doom both here, no way to lock down their target, though, dodging up the Split Earth, Hannah should be fine here. So this is gonna be two members of Scythe Gaming to be able to walk away, but a push may indeed Indeed ensue from Spirit. I mean, they have one point in Diabolic Edict. They do have the bear with uh, full. Oh, wow, wow. Miracle jumping in hardcore right here, going big damage into ABCXYZ. Gonna be able to bring him down. I did not think he'd go that aggressive, but knowing that the Doom's on cooldown, he's going as deep as he wishes. Gonna be able to bring down the Leshrac for sure. Looking at the Doom, Mises regenerating HP pretty rapidly, but the, unfortunately for the Shadow Demon, he has nowhere to go. Now Misa, low HP, no cooldowns, gonna get hit by the Bolas, and he's gonna die to the damage over time! Miracle gets a triple kill, only 11 and a half minutes into the game. This is quite impressive play. I, like I said, I did not think he'd go that aggressive. Usually you look at this guy like a glass cannon, and you do not want to get too aggressive, but just knowing the limitations of Spirit Gaming and exploiting it, Miracle picks the team apart. Yeah, that hero, as I said, it's it's going to be first band material as you look into the into the new cups coming up. It's just too OP. I mean, look at the way he's playing it, and that is pretty much perfect for Dyer's how you play that hero. And it's attack. yeah, it's so hard to deal with, especially in the late game. Once he starts picking up a couple of damage items and he gets that slider first, like I've seen a couple of. I mean, from the from times I watch him playing just pubs and that, you see them going big, big damage items. Some people like to go for a battle fury. Um, others go straight into like two chrysalis and then go into two daedalus. So. It's and it's it's weird to see it happen, but when you see the strength of Slater first, I mean, it's it has a six second cooldown at level four, Dyer's and if you have both those items, if you have two Daedalus, two Crystalis, two Battle Furies, anything silly like that, that seems silly, that's actually not that silly. Right, we're gonna see the Split Earth follow the destruction, but he's gonna dodge it with the Slater Fist. Very nicely done by Miracle. Now the Doom will come out onto Polison. He's gonna take quite a few hits. Maybe no, the mechanism will keep him up. Now they don't really have any traction in this fight. The barrel will be summoned, but the vacuum together. Big damage coming out onto Leshrac, and there's a great ultimate from Miracle. Dropping down the fire remnants, splashing onto everybody. I mean, that was just a fresh, oh no, not a fresh summon, but a fresh recall on the bear. Dropping it down. Spirit Bear looking, or Silver Bear looking really, really weak right now. Not having any items to his name. We do see Miracle dropping the bolus. Marana will be hit up by the Searing Chains, but it's only going to be a secret that gets found out. And he should indeed fall. Polisson dodging away from the arrow. Miracle tanking it up, but <laughs> number six has nothing going on here. I mean, they don't have the Doom. They don't have anything. And he's going to get gailed up. He just fed his life away. It's like, oh, I hit an arrow. Let's go kill the guy that absorbed all the damage and is still sitting at 80% HP. Not so yeah. much.
Ah, oh, feed, feed, feed. Very important for spirit gaming. He left a spirit up here as well, so I mean, if you. There we go. <laughs> he comes straight back in. Right back up. It's just. That hero is just un insane. But at the same time, yeah, really playing it playing it really well. This, and Hana as well. I mean, adding that. that it, the iron shell to his flame guard is mm -hmm. just insane. I mean, it's almost like almost close to about 200 damage. Just how much it's how much damage per second. So in a second, wow, 60 damage per second. So it's about 100 damage per second that he gets from both iron shell and that. But now problems for Silver again, who just oh, falls. He actually gets first hit entangled. Gonna try to TP away, but gets disrupted instead. They do waste the arrow, but the diabolic damage with the demonic purge is br plenty to bring down freedom, despite how tanky he indeed may be. The Invisoring Pop from Ember Spirit, he was looking for an opening, but this time I don't think Miracle is going to get that aggressive. Well, you don't know, it's Miracle. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, they do have the Docks in the middle lane who does have his ultimate. Oh my gosh, they're going at Pulse on a huge vacuum and with the wall following the Dream Coil. Big, big magic damage coming out, and they're going to be able to t clean up three immediately. That wasn't even a contest. They did throw out the Doom on Hannah, but accomplished very little with it. He's still up here on the front lines, about to mech after the Doom ex ex expires, but my goodness, could you ask for a better team fight? I mean, this was just a slaughter. Yeah, I mean, they've got this They've got this down to a T, you know, as, it, as you saw that team fight, how it, was, how it went out. Uh, that was exactly what their strat was when they drafted these heroes, and now they're doing it perfectly over and over again. I mean, it's kind of the second team fight they've done that, not that exact combo, because I think Paulson last time got doomed and wasn't able to get the um, wasn't able to get the Dream Call down at the same time as the wall, but this time, coming out of nowhere, getting the, the Dream Call down, and then obviously following up with a wall, and uh, in comes Miracle with all the damage in the world. Yeah. And uh, it looks like he is going to go for a... a, a do you think it's going to be definitely a Crystal? It's not, it's not going to be a... Won't be a blade mail, surely. What? Maybe a battle fury? Battle fury as well. Yeah, I like I like the I like the crystalis build. I like the the, two, the getting getting as many daedalus as you can. <laughs> um, it's it's quite quite fun. The damage is absolutely insane. Now, he can be a trouble over here. That's yeah. a bit of a problem that they do that first. Uh, the arrow will connect though, and he's just gonna. He already put down his ember spirit preemptively, so or flame spirit as it is. Uh, fire revenant. There we go. There's so many different. Uh, ways to express that but yeah fire remnant was in place so that he could evade that assault and yeah now he's kind of just sitting high and dry i'm not sure about his uh prospective build up i mean there's so many different ways oh wow spare uh, that is actually pulls on going deep into the enemy base to go for the tp without an arrow he's gonna manage it how amazing of a pickoff is that spirit syllabare just dropped down next to his own jungle with three allies supporting him you can't pull that off with anybody less skilled than somebody like Bolson. <laughs> that is just incredible. Well, let's have a quick Dyer's look. I want to have a quick look at the attack. goal graph. 12k hit for Sath, 10k in terms of experience, and uh, you know there's been a mech picked up now on the on the Doom on the Doom. Almost a Doom Spirit on the Doom. Uh, you know the items coming out not really that much. Spirit Bed did. Um, Sorry, the Silver did go for the um, did go for the Hand of Midas, obviously trying to push it a little bit into the late game, but I don't know how well that's going to do going in. But you look at the items over on South. I mean, they're setting Dyer's up for tower probably attack. a finish in the next sort of five or six minutes as they come. I mean, I'm still waiting to see what Miracle goes for and with that broadsword. I want to believe it's a South. It's a, it's a Crystalis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very possible. They're really just going for huge damage output. If you look at their lineup right now, uh, they're so well set up for it. I mean, like you mentioned, the Iron Shell Flame Guard does immense damage over time uh, in conjunction with the Venomancer's uh, Poison Nova, but you put on top of that the Veil of Discord, and all three of those spells are amplified extremely effectively. So he's just tearing through people just yeah. by being in proximity. But getting and a couple more hits tower off, tower he's going to be able to dish out a ton of damage. And in this case, it looks like it is going to be the Battle Fury, but... I mean, one way or another, you get that set up with the vacuum, and you are just tearing Dyer's through your opponents, especially with attack. that combo of Slide of Fifth plus Battle Fury. Yeah. Well, I guess any damage item really just rips apart when it comes to that. But um, And also, I mean, they have, as you mentioned, a lot of damage over time. Searing Chains as well, sitting about 80 damage, or at the moment level 3, 80 damage a second. And if he, once he does lock them down in the middle of that, in the middle of the Dyer's wall, Dream Coil, Gale, <laughs> everything comes yeah. out. And it's, it's it's such a perfectly planned team fight that sometimes Radiant's sometimes when you look at teams you think oh you know they 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 the potential to, to win fights sort of relies way too much on each other but as you saw them picking pick up in other lanes I mean they have the heroes fallen. to do that as well so when they want to they can group together and cause a massive team fight and win it very very easily or bottom lane 
Yeah, this also, is going to be Pulse on Doomed Up, going to drop low, but a movement from Hannah blinking in and mecking up the puck, so that now they are the ones that are going to be able to turn it around. Misa running for the hills, but nowhere to go. Knowing the vacuum is always available, he can't TP away, and he will indeed fall. In fact, it's Puck to get the vengeance on him after that Doom. Who is Doomed? Who has Doomed who? Yeah, that, that was, I mean, that was the last quick rotation as well coming out from uh, from South against Bond there. But, but as I was saying, yeah, they do, they have the potential to take pickoffs and, and win sort of 2v3 fights or 3v2, whatever. And at the same time, yeah, they do have massive, massive Seriously? fight potential. <laughs> they, they, they don't care. They don't care what Spirit Gaming responds with because they feel like they're strong enough. And in oh. fact, the disruption messes up the arrow so they can't get the stuns up. Ember Spirit destroys two immediately. They just melt before him, and they don't get anything out of the fight. In fact, Miracle might get one more going in. The bullet chains will be able to connect, and that is going to be the death of the Leshrac as well. This is just a slaughter. Pub gaming is essentially what we're looking at right now because we're going to see a 20-minute concede just about. Yeah, and uh, I'm just, I'm just going to call it now. There's going to be an Ever Spirit ban in game two. Oh yeah, I mean I could definitely see it. A lot of teams are <laughs> respecting him as a first phase band hero and at the very least the first phase pick hero to experiment with him to open him up on into the meta a little bit more. Now once people kind of figure him out and are able to deal with him a little bit I wouldn't say more effectively but more efficiently that where they don't have to commit too many picks to him to make sure that he can't spam his spells all the time but also not uh, feel really weak against him as well just that kind of, uh, there's a little bit of a middle ground for any new meta hero. And specifically Ember Spirit, you have to counter him with something. But you don't want to counter him with too much because you're going to be weak to everything else. So, in this case they got the Doom. It didn't exactly work the way they wanted it to. And uh, they are going to have to readjust their strategy. Perhaps just banning out the Ember Spirit. But I, I think that a lot of the better teams are going to be embracing the opportunity to face him and to figure him out. Because the sooner they yeah. figure this guy out, the better off they're going to be against teams that pick him. Uh, insta lock first phase every single time. Oh, look at that damage coming out from Slide of Fist as well as the Searing Chains. Oh my yeah. gosh, he actually picked off Leshrac. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, I, th I think, I mean, not to take anything from, anything from Spirit Gaming, but at least the, the, the um, Syllabare pickup was a bit of a mistake and he's about to go down now as well. Hmm. One more hit. Oh, oh Doxy takes it himself. So yeah, uh, that was a bit of uh, um, that was a bit of a mistake picking up Silbe. He hasn't really done anything for them in this game. I mean, he hasn't been able to push. He hasn't really been involved in kills. He's been picked off the whole time. And uh, yeah, so it was a bit, little bit of a mistake. Lushrak, um, I mean, the combo that they went for Lushrak, Potten, and um, and uh, and uh, the Shadow Demon. You know, I felt like that didn't really work out that well for them since Puck can phase shift. I mean, they had two heroes, like essentially the two heroes they wanted to take down was the Puck and the Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit can slide a fist or jump away with his ultimate if he comes out of that. And uh, at the same time, you know, Puck can phase shift as he comes out of the out of the disruption. So that combo didn't work for them at all in that bottom lane. And he can, he might get a kill here. Oh, arrow. This actually might be their only opening on him. They're going to pop the Doom, but get Vacuum right into it. It's a huge bait. Miracle will fall. But look at the damage the Scythe is able to do in his wake. Uh, we do see Marana dropping low to the Poison Nova Gale. Gonna, you know, thinking about a couple different spells, but she honestly just has to retreat. Like, her health is dropping. That Veil of Discord plus Poison Nova brings her down to a very lethal range. And in the end, they're happy to finally bring down that Ember, bring down his Unstoppable Spree, uh, spree Streak, sorry, and get 800 gold on the Marana, but I'm just not sure if there's any amount of gold in the world that could bring them back into this. Right now, all they're sitting on is a Midas and a Gloves of Haste on the Spirit Bear. It looked like almost like the Lone Druid wanted to go for a double Midas build, if not the Maelstrom pickup, and it's just, he's taking way too long, as you mentioned, to become any real threat. He's not effective in any regard, and it's just been a very significant hindrance. So I have a question for you. If you were Spirit Gaming, and you drafted this exact lineup minus Lone Druid against what Scythe is bringing here, what hero would you sub in instead? Instead of a Lone Druid, I would have probably picked up a... No, it would have been something different for the long lane. Um, well, first of all, I probably wouldn't have drafted the Doom or kill on me, so speak of Doom for you. Oh, he's gonna get away. Yeah, he'll get away. Um, I don't know, it's it's difficult. I mean, uh, you can't necessarily pick out one hero and say what, what I would place with, but if I was replacing it with a safe lane farming hero, I would have mm -hmm. gone for... Oh, no, wait, he was banned. Um, 
I don't know, it's difficult because the supports at the same time. You, um, the one support that I think really, really damages the um, the Ember Spirit is the Lion, because you get that instant hex, you know, before you can jump away, burst him down, before he gets the Flame Guard off, if you do catch him out. So it's difficult to, to single out a hero, but uh, I would have replaced Silla with... God, I don't even know. Yeah, that, that's, that's <laughs> the problem I have with it, and that's why, exactly why I posed the question to you, is because I feel like with the gank momentum they got early on with the Spirit Breaker, Charge combined with Darkseer just dominating the lane. Hannah played impeccably on that Darkseer, though, will now eat an arrow. It's just, I feel like any other hero in that same lane position probably would have done just as poorly. I mean, there are exceptions, but I just, I don't really know if there's a go to, okay, this was a mistake, let's just do this instead. I feel like it, it's kind of a back to the drawing board. They have to change up a lot if they're going to be able to pull ahead in game two. Actually, now that I think of it, I mean, it, not that it really suits their lineup that much, but they did have, in their sense, a pretty strong off aggressive off lane with the Mirana. Well, they're gonna track. They're just gonna make more kills as we keep turning. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they're gonna go down. Uh, you know, with your Mirana, they um, they had a very very easy combo to land one lane or problems maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's always back and forth. We do see Freedom coming in. He will connect on Electric, pop the dust, get the kill. BKB comes out, and this should be the death of Doom as well. Actually, a nice Vacuum Gale and Dream Coil should set up the Marana death as well. Yes, she will indeed fall. And they're just running them back to their base. The GG, the tap out. Finally, they throw in the towel. I just want to finish what I was saying about um, one hero that I think would have done well if um, they were going to go for the safe, the, 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 the safe lane is... Um, you know, if they were going to have a try themselves, anti mage does really well against um, Doxia. Like he, he wrecks yeah, yeah, he definitely does. Levels in the in his in his Mandarin, he can destroy the Doxia. But then again, they had that tri lane rotating everywhere, blah blah blah. But uh, I don't know. First pick, Lone Druid, it's not really for me. Oh they obviously yeah. They had a plan. Yeah, it's not even just the fact that they picked it and it didn't do much, but they first picked it. That's that's just awkward. I mean, like you said, they in order to justify that pick in this meta, you really have to have to have an amazing Lone Druid player and. Uh, judging yeah. by the CS score when he was just solo against the Darkseer, judging by just how easily he was picked off, of course some of it is the supports to blame, but some of it is also on his shoulders, and that was just quite an unfortunate showing from him. Mm -hmm. But well, alas, um, they'll change up their game, they'll look into game two and try to bring it uh, at least one game into their fold for this best of three yeah. series. They're going to try to triumph over Scythe in the next game coming up in just a few minutes, guys, here in the AOC Pro Cup. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Shout out to AOC for sponsoring the tournament, uh, as well as Dota Talk and Dat. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed the game so far, and we'll see another great game from Scythe and hopefully some more showing from Spirit in just a few minutes. This is Blaze and Congo Kyle. We'll see you guys in the next one.